Good evening and welcome to the Palace here at Wayne Trace High School for tonight's matchup between the Crestview Knights and the Wayne Trace Raiders. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, we should have a tremendous matchup tonight. Two teams who are having great seasons. Crestview out to a phenomenal start. Wayne Trace having a great season as well. Should be an excellent matchup against two teams that this has become a pretty good rivalry over the last couple of years. I think if you like offense, this is a great game to attend. You know, Wayne Trace coming in with practically three players in double digits, and then you're looking at the starting lineup for um, Crestview that's, that's putting four in double figures. So, yeah, it's going to be an entertaining game. Both teams well coached, both rich in basketball tradition. You know, Crestview with the, the, the one hiccup to a very good Spencerville team, and you know, Wayne Trace coming in eight and three, winners are the last two. It should be a really, really uh, interesting ball game tonight. Take a look at tonight's starters for each team, starting first for the Crestview Knights. They are going to start number one, Gavin Etzler, number five, Mitch Temple, number 10, Carson Hunter, number 25, Nate Lichty, number 33, Ren Sheets. For the Wayne Trace Raiders, they have number three, Hudson Myers, number five, Tanner Lockhoff, number 20, Brooks Lockhoff, number 24, Tyler Davis, and number 40, Kyle Stoller. The opening tip is up, and it will be handled by Wayne Trace. Rusty coming out man to man. As Gil mentioned, Wayne Trace, as they have the first turnover of the game, here comes Crestview. Almost lost it, had that one picked up by Etzler. Gets it back up top near midcourt. Wayne Trace comes into tonight 8-3 overall. Winning uh, winner last night in conference play against Tenora. Crestview, nice feed down low. That's one's rejected. Got the offensive rebound and put back up by Ren Sheets for the first two points of the game. Young man coming in, shooting 73% on twos for Crestview. Really nice set right there with a little slip screen action. Crestview comes in tonight 10-1 on the season. As Gil mentioned, just one loss against Spencerville, a two-point conference loss. Other than that, they have been perfect. And they have come into tonight on a six-game win streak looking to extend that. Another turnover by the Raiders. Crestview coming back up on offense. Good point. That's her second one already in two possessions. Quick shot on three off the mark by Lichty. Rebound comes down to the Raiders. See lock off. Wanted to push the tempo, a little hesitation, kicks it down into the corner. Myers gets rid of it. Lockoff comes back up to take it. Lockoff off to the left, pulls up. Jumper is going to be short. Rebound comes down to the Knights. Pushing the tempo. Nice job getting into the lane with the right hand was Carson Hunter. He couldn't get it to go down, but he will pick up the foul. And they got he, Davis. And he will make a trip to the free throw line. Foul is on Tyler Davis, his first, team's first, as Hunter's first free throw goes through. 68% from the charity strike, 13 to 19 for that young man. Hunter's second shot up. This one no good off the back of the iron. Rebound ends up into the hands of the Raiders. It's under 6.30 left to go here in the first, just underway. Wayne Trace looking to see if they can't get on the scoreboard. Wayne Trace moving around the perimeter, showing some patience. Here's Myers trying to find somewhere to get rid of it and ends up dropping it off to Tyler Davis along the baseline. He finds a cutting Stoller, and he's able to take some contact and get that one up for two. Really nice back cut by the young man, but better body control and taking that up strong, getting the deuce. 3-2, Crestview on top. As you see, Mitch Temple. He's able to find Etzler. Etzler with the hesitation. His shot not able to go up. He gets his own rebound. Hunter tried to dump it off. Has it taken away. Lockoff takes it all the way in for two. Great play by that young man. Reaching with the inside hand, getting the deflection. Taking it the full length of the court for the bucket. That's all off a little bit of a lazy pass that time as they were just kind of. And you see another one. Here goes Lockoff one more time. Doing a great job of anticipating those passes, getting into the passing lane, and it's led to two easy layups. 
Yeah, they're throwing to spots and, and, and not to offensive players. Three-pointer by Temple. That one's off. Loose ball. Crestview comes up with the offensive rebound. Hunter drops it down for Sheets. Sheets, he's off. So Crestview came out quickly and was able to get a couple of baskets, but since then, the defense of Wayne Trace has stepped up. Back-to-back -back turnovers, and then came up with the defensive stand that last time. Myers, thought about it for a second, dumps it back off. Here's Brooks Lockoff. He's able to get the finger roll for two. Six straight points for Brooks Lockoff. Really, really athletic, isn't he? Moves really well with or without the basketball driver slasher. Almost came up with another one there as Crestview just being a little lazy with the basketball. And we have a collision as Kyle Stoller took the worst of that interaction. And he's going to get helped up. Try to walk off some of the pain, and it looks like we're going to have a timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Cary Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our community. So we had a foul on that one as that foul is going to be called on Mitch Temple. That was his first, team's first. Now, uncharacteristically, Nate Crestview's got four turnovers early here in this first uh, quarter. It looks like right now Wayne Trace is able to kind of dictate the pace and done a nice job of just being able to be a lot more active defensively, getting themselves some easy baskets. But right there, Ren Sheets tries to cut that one in front of that one, but ends up out of bounds, so it will stay with the Raiders. They did a good job staying up the line and in the line on there and deflecting that basketball out of bounds. Stoller drops it off to Lockoff, who's up near the top. Kicks it back around the perimeter. Brooks Lockoff having a great first quarter. He's able to turn defense into offense as he's currently the leading scorer with six points. Kicks it down to Davis. Davis off. Rebound ends up into the hands of Lichty. Crestview pushes. As this is Jared Harding who checked into the game for Crestview. He's going to be off on his shot. So another one and done possession for Crestview. On the other side, Lockoff steps into a big three. Late coming out to challenge him, and Brooks made him pay. Yeah, he's definitely zoned in. So now Harding drops it down into the corner. Crestview with another shot. Another quick offensive possession as Crestview now has been ice cold on offense. Brooks Lockoff has the hot hand currently. Looks like he wants to try to heat check. He's going to drive in a cup between a couple of Crestview defenders. Can't get that one to go in. Three point shot on his way by Temple. Looked like he hesitated a little bit and might have thrown his shot off. And then on the rebound. That one's going to go against Ren Sheets. That's his first team second. What's the old motto? Think long or think no. You, you, you think that shot there take too much time and it's going to throw you off, and that's exactly what happened right there. A couple of substitutions into the game for both teams. Number 35, Nazir Easterling for Crestview checking into the game, as did number 10, Brady Miller. And there was one other substitution. Number 15, Kale Winnids coming in for the Raiders. 2.20 left to go here in the opening quarter. Lockoff pulls up for another three. This one's going to be off the side of the rim. Rebound comes down to Crestview. Good job by Harding there defending that shot opportunity. Looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Has to drop it down. Crest, or, uh, excuse me, Wayne Trace is really content. To just uh, and they just got an offensive foul on Etzler. They're face guarding him right now with number 15, Winnings. Good job by that young man and got Etzler frustrated and he pushed off for the offensive foul and another turnover for the Knights. 
Team's third foul here in the quarter as Wayne Trace tries to inbound it, able to get it into to Kale as he's going to bring it up into the front court. Takes some contact, kicks it down into the corner. Shot on its way. This one's no good. Rebound down into the hands of Wayne Trace. They've done a nice job of giving themselves second and third opportunities here in the early going. Brooks lock off one more time. He's going to go baseline under the basket, but a little bit too far as he steps out of bounds. So it'll be another turnover by Wayne Trace. Crestview will have another opportunity with 134 left to go in the first. Took a little bit too deep on the baseline, and you take it that deep, you're running out of real estate or room down there, and he stepped on the end line. So after nine points in the quarter, Brooks Lockoff is going to take a seat, give himself a little bit of a rest. As Tanner Lockoff checks into the game. We also have Kellen Putman as he had checked in for Crestview. Easterling kicks it back out. Three-point shot on its way in and out. Fight for the rebound ends up in the hands of Wayne Trace. Trace doing a much better job, Wayne Trace, that is. I'm really giving him a one and done now after giving three early offensive rebounds. Stoller just a little bit off on his pass, but great hustle as Kale Winnes was able to track that one down, maintain the possession. Stoller one more time, just a little bit off on those passes. But fortunately, Winnes able to keep the possession alive. Three pointer, no good. As Harding comes up with the rebound. He going to push the pace. Crestview now is going to settle a little bit. Edsler kicks it back out. Goes and gets it. Hesitation. Head fake. Three-pointer. No good. Looked like Tyler Davis wanted to run out on that one but thought against it with 15 seconds left to go and Wayne Trace will look for the last shot of the quarter. Here's Stoller, drops it to Winnens. He's going to take the shot, kicked it back over to Stoller, and Stoller's three-pointer is going to be just short off the front of the rim. That will bring the first quarter to a close. After one, it's all Wayne Trace. They are on top 11-3. To we'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. I'd also like to thank tonight's premier sponsor, Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Welcome back to the Palace here at Wayne Trace High School as the Raiders find themselves on top of the visiting Crestview Knights, 11 to three. And we talked leading into uh, tip-off how we thought this was gonna be an offensive kind of Big matchup, lots of points scored as Lockoff comes up with his third steal of the half and that went into another easy run out for two. And Wayne Trace has kept up their end of the bargain, but Crestview right now really struggling on they're, offense. They're getting it done in the quarter court, and that being Wayne Trace. I mean, they're taking every cut away, every pass angle away, doing a good job communicating, and they're going one and done on the glass. And when you stir all that together, that's a lot of success. There's another turnover on Crestfield. And you've seen a lot of heads hanging right now, some frustration setting in, and it's still early. That can be a big hill to climb when you find yourself kind of getting down already. Some miscommunication, throwing the ball away. Crestview right now has to regroup and, and try to get themselves back in this game. Yeah, it's got to be one possession at a time, Nate. But I, I agree, they've got to get something here, something productive, a defensive stop and a basket, and then another defensive stop something continuous to give them a little bit of confidence. Here's Lockoff. Having a big night so far as he has 11 points. Wayne Trace showing good patience, not trying to force anything. Stoller gonna go to work into the lane, dropped it down to Davis, but before then he was fouled. I think that was on Hunter with the grab. And it is, that is going to be his first, team's fourth. This one will be at, out of bounds for Wayne Trace under their basket. Brooks
Coach Lockoff pulls up in transition. And a technical as Brooks Lockoff must have said said something. I think it I think it was more so Nate. As soon as the three went in, he looked at the Crestview bench. Didn't say anything, but it was just a look, and I think the official interpreted that as a little bit of taunting. So Brooks Lockoff off to a great start tonight. Hit another big three as it was a great catch and shoot. But Adsler comes down and makes the first of the technical free throw. And the second one as well. So it has been quite a while since Crestview had scored. And thanks to a technical foul on Brooks Lockoff, Gavin Etzler is able to go to the free throw line, get a couple of points. And now the Knights down 11, also going to get possession. Crestry right now just having a hard time with this man-to-man -man defense that Wayne Trace is showing. Not a lot of openings. They're doing a nice job of switching off. Ren Sheets tries to go to work, kicks it back out. Hunter loses the basketball, but it's going to be picked up by Sheets. Sheets gets it back to Hunter. Pass down to Temple. And once again to Hunter as Crestry now back into just trying to find some space. Long offensive possession here for Crestry, but Wayne Trace doing a nice job as Hunter puts up a three-pointer. This one's going to be off. Sheets able to chase down the rebound. Tries to get it inside. It's going to be knocked out of bounds by Stoller. As Crestview right now not finding a lot on the inside. Wayne Trace doing a nice job of keeping things contained, not letting them, not being too far away from any pass right now. And Crestview is just really struggling to get open looks. It's the number of deflections that the Raiders are getting right now. Mitch Temple looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Gets it to Hunter. Hunter has this one poked away. He gets on the floor, gets it into the hands of Sheets, and Sheets right place, right time, able to get two points. Great effort right there by uh, Carson Hunter getting on the floor, making the easy pass for the finish. Appears to be a left shoulder. Kyle Stoller went to the ground, had some contact, immediately comes off the floor holding his shoulder. Not sure if it went out of place as he's getting looked at by the trainers. So going to have a substitution. Number 22, Carter Clemens comes in for the Raiders as they are on top 16 to 7 with 524 left to go here in the quarter. Stoller looks to be okay as he is done getting looked at by the trainer. Going to go sit down. So I would imagine we will see him before too long back in this game. They got Klein there. So another foul for Crestview. This one is on Isaac Klein, his first, team's fifth. So foul starting to rack up a little bit for Crestview, but nobody with more than one. Pull up for Lock off. This one's going to be off the front of the rim. Hunter comes up with the rebound. Pushes it up ahead. Now Klein, long pass over to Hunter. That's Crestview still. They want to go inside. They are trying to get it to Sheets down low, but Wayne Trace is just not having it. Tyler Davis with the steal on that one. Deflection right into the steal. Lockoff drops it over to Myers. Hands it right back to him as Brooks Lockoff is looking to stay hot. Pierce Kresge switching everything now, especially on the perimeter. Myers thought about the three-pointer, decides to take it in, has this one blocked by Sheets. Hunter comes up with it. Nice play by Sheets. Hunter gets it down to Temple. Has that one blocked, but he gets it. And we're going to have a foul. As it looks like they're going to get this one on number three, Hudson Myers. That will be his first, just the team's third. Big play by that freshman, Carter Clemens. Number 22 with that block shot right there. Nice, nice minutes by the young man. So Kyle Stoller back into the game for Wayne Trace. We also see Jared Harding come back in for Crestview. 
Nice inbounds play that time to Sheets. Couldn't get the first one. He got his own rebound, but had that one rejected. Davis comes up with it and drops it down. As Wayne Trace now looking to extend this lead. Lockoff trying to find someone to go with it. He eventually ends up in the hands of Brady Miller. And then Lockoff gets it back as he works through the paint. Wayne Trace doing a nice job moving the ball. Never holding on to it for too long. And a lot of times have Crestview chasing. Stoller following the miss by Tyler Davis as Kyle Stoller comes up with his four, uh, fourth point of the half. Nice move to the baseline, reverse layup. Missed it, but Johnny on the spot. Mr. Stoller there for the offensive rebound and stick back. Klein gave, gave it over to Temple. Temple had a look at three, but decided not to take it. And now it's going to be Klein for three. And this one's good as Isaac Klein has his first points. Big shot for that young man. Cut a day. Now lock off, waiting for the offense to get set. And here comes Myers. Back over to lock off into the corner. Had to gather it back in, and Stoller working against a double team. Turn around with the right hand. That one's no good. Klein now. He gets cut off, has to get rid of it. Nowhere to go, has to throw it deep. Fortunate play for Crestview that time as Harding was able to gather it in and ends up back in the hands of Klein. Now here's Lichty, he's gonna drive. Stops, loses his footing, but gets rid of it. As Isaac Klein has come into the game off the bench and given Crestview some good minutes. Lockoff is just, he is just missing on some of these that he's reaching out to try to get on some of these passes. Seems like it's only a matter of time before he comes up with well, another he does, one. He's just got great anticipation, doesn't he? For Power and I didn't hit anything. So now it's Crestview as Isaac Klein is going to get called for the travel, so another turnover. And some more substitutions coming in as we see Carson Hunter coming back in for Crestview. Our apologies there for a little technical difficulties. 18 to 10, Wayne Trace on top. 122 left to go here in the half. Tanner Lockoff brings it up for Wayne Trace. Here's Stoller. Stoller's had a good first half. Working against Easterling, gets it up. That one's going to be short. Crestview's really turned up the intensity on defense. And it is paid off. Nice drop down low to Easterling as he's able to finish for two. Carson Hunter, nice little dish off, bounce pass. Easterling giving him good minutes off the bench along with Klein. So another drive by the Raiders. This one's no good. Stoller can't come up with the rebound. Carson Hunter works it up to Harding. He gives it right back. Hunter drops it down low to Easterling. Under the basket, working against Davis. Trying to find somewhere to go. Here comes Etzler, kicks it out. Extra pass to Hunter. Hunter with the hesitation in the drive. That one's no good, but he's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. Nice patience by the visiting Knights right there. Good ball reversal. Nice attack there by Carson Hunter to the rim. He's going to get two free throws. Six-point ball game right now with 25 seconds to go. Carson Hunter not able to connect on the first of his two shots. Just 25 seconds left to go as Crestview at one point down 13 have come back. Hunter ends up with it after the miss, high off the glass for two. Explain that to me, we can miss two free throws and then Make an acrobatic, unbelievable shot right there. Great athleticism there by Carson Hunter. So 
Brooks Lockoff with the basketball. Five seconds left to go in the half. Goes around, drops it off, shot on its way. That one's no good, and that is going to bring the first half to a close. Crestview has done a nice job here in this second quarter to get themselves back in this game and heading to the locker room. All the momentum seems to be shifting towards the night. They're still down with work to do. We'll be back in the second half right here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Palace here at Wayne Trace High School. That second half action is just about underway between the Crestview Knights and the Wayne Trace Raiders. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, you know, I think if you would have told either one of us going into the third quarter, we were looking at an 18-14 game, we would have taken that bet pretty easily. Yeah, if you see that online right now, you'd think it's a misprint. But, you know, give credit to both teams and both coaching staffs, you know, for preparing their kids for this game. This is a great game for both schools because this is an out-of-conference game. It's a great test to see where you stand as you go into your, you know, basically your second half of the league play coming up next week. So we'll see what kind of adjustments both teams can make as Wayne Trace controlled the first quarter. They got out to an 11-3 lead. But then in that second quarter, Crestview found their legs. They managed to get back into this game and just ended up down four heading into the locker room. They kind of all seemed to turn on that Brooks Lockoff technical there after he made a big three-point shot. Crestview came down, made both of the technical free throws, and Lockoff has yet to score since then, and Crestview has made a nice run. Yeah, they've got to get one of their double-digit scores into the game, you know what I'm saying, scoring-wise, because right now it's not just, you know, one score, but none of the four are putting a lot of numbers on the board. There's a turnover again by Crestview. Stoller gets it up ahead to lock off as he's going to be fouled by Nate Lichty. And he will go to the free throw line for the and one opportunity. Nate Lichty. That is his first of the night. As both teams have their original starters on the floor here to begin this half for Crestview. That's Etzler Temple. Hunter, Lichty, and Sheets. And for Wayne Trace, Myers, Lockoff, Lockoff, Davis, and Stoller. So Brooks Lockoff makes his first trip to the free throw line. Already with 16 points on the night, not able to connect on that. That's one of those, if you're Lichty, you can't give him the and one. You know what I'm saying? You got to waste the foul, make him earn the two free throws. You know, fortunately for the Knights, he missed that one free throw he got after the main bucket. Three-point shot on its way, no good. Stoller with the rebound. Tanner Lockoff brings it up for the Raiders. Drops it down to Davis. Davis, a lone senior on this team, kicks it back out to Lockoff. That one's off. As you see, Ren Sheets come up with the rebound. Etzler, extra pass to Hunter. Nice drop off as Carson Hunter ends up with the basket, and now he has five on the night. Nicely done on the distribution of that pass by Gavin Etzler. And now Hunter with the steal, passes it up ahead. Temple able to get this one off the glass as Tanner Lockoff now is going to get whistled for the foul. And Crestview with an opportunity to pull within one, depending on whether or not Mitch Temple can knock down this shot. I'll tell you, partner, Car Carter Carson Hunter's come to play here this second quarter and this early third quarter. He's kept the Knights active at both ends of the floor, and... Just been real solid. Mitch Temple not able to connect on the free throw. We're at a two-point game. Hunter almost with another steal, but Stoller able to grab it, and he gets this one off the glass. Good finish there by the young man, Stoller at the rim. Here's Hunter. Into the lane, drops it off to Sheets. Sheets off the glass for two, and now the offenses seem to be finding their legs as we are going back and forth as it is 22-20, under six left to go here in the third. <coughs> this one's going to get re rejected as Ren Sheets was able to get his hand on it. Hunter. He gets the run out. That one's no good. Sheets with the putback. That one's no good. Another opportunity, and that one 
does go down. Big fella cleaning up the glass, isn't he? Ran Sheets with eight points on the night, four in the quarter, and we are all tied at 22. Starting to show his post presence for the visitors. Lock off. Tried to drive, gets cut off, so he kicks it back out to Stoller, who gets it over to Brooks. Lock off. He steps into a three. That one's off. Stoller trying to get the rebound. Tipped it to himself a couple of times. Had this one knocked out of his hands by Hunter, but it will stay with the Raiders. I'll tell you, Stoller's an undersized post player, but, man, his motor is going you know, 100 miles an hour. What an effort on the glass right there. Now Wayne Trace trying to go back on the inside. Sheets read it. He's able to come up with it. Carson Hunter looking to see where to go with the basketball. Drops it down. And shot is good by Kellen Putman. And we are going to have a timeout by Wayne Trace as they find themselves trailing for the first time since the opening seconds of this game. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Also like to thank tonight's premier sponsor, Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. 4.43 left to go here in the third quarter as Crestview has stormed back. They found themselves down early 11-3, but since then they have outscored Wayne Trace 21-11, and they are on top two. Where are they getting it started from? from their defensive effort in the quarter court, forcing turnovers, giving them one shot, and then running the offense to perfection and pounding the glass. And you see Crush would come out and put a little pressure on Wayne Trace, not let them get the basketball up so easily. Brooks Lockoff able to dribble out of that, as now Wayne Trace will get set up on offense. Lockoff has been a little bit off his shot since the early going, as he had nine points in the first and five in the second. And we haven't seen quite as many shots, and that will be another turnover by Wayne Trace. So now Edsler bringing it up into the front court. He gets it off. Edsler for three. Edsler. That one's good as Edsler comes up with the big three-pointer. Gavin Edsler had only had his, any of his points from the free throw line. Comes up with a big three-pointer on that possession. It is now 27-22. Crestview extending that lead. Wayne Trace trying to end a little bit of this bleeding as Tyler Davis gets to the rim. Can't get that one to go, but he will shoot two from the free throw line. Good drive by that young man getting high off the glass. Almost got the end one. Connor Sheets gets whistled for the foul. That was his first, team second of the half. As Davis's first free throw is no good. It's hard to believe right now, Etzler sitting with five points. That was a big three right there. Maybe, get, maybe that will get him going. Tyler Davis lines up his second free throw. It's on its way. And this one is no good. Rebound up in the hands of Jared Harding as Gavin Etzler now bring it up into the front court. Here's Temple looking for somewhere to go with the basketball, looking for a little bit of help. Finally ends up in the hands of Putman who gets it back over to Temple. Temple now goes low. Connor Sheets has to kick it back out. Three point shot on its way, that one's no good. Tyler Davis went up high, was able to get that one. Wayne Trace now looking to get back on track offensively. Here's Davis, gets into the lane, has to get rid of it. Back up to Brooks Lockoff. You know they'd love to get him going again with the way that he was shooting, and this one's no good. Mitch Temple looks up going to run the floor. Drops it off to Harding who drives with the right hand. That one's no good. 
And Harding ended up with the basketball. Unfortunately, his heels were out of bounds. And so the basketball will go back to Crestview. You know, Coach Etzler's really went to his bench tonight, and they've really been productive for him. They've kept him in the game, their second effort, and you know, just relentless effort, and they pushed this thing to five points with just here 2.30 to go. Third. Excuse me, obviously that ball went back to Wayne Trace, not Crestview. As Harding was out of bounds. So Davis now up top, working against Harding. He's going to drive. Gets it off the glass, gets some contact. Can't get it to go down, but he'll go to the free throw line one more time. Wasn't able to connect on his last trip. Looking to try to see if he can't change that on this one. 2.13 left to go here in the third as Crestview now has opened up a five-point lead. 38% coming into the night from the charity strike. Davis makes the adjustment, able to knock down his first free throw. Now 27-23. Davis. Long senior on the ball club. Davis not able to get the second one to go. As neither team has shot particularly well from the free throw line tonight. And we're going to have an offensive foul, it looks like. This one's going to go on number 34, Connor Sheets, his second. It is the team's fourth here of the second half already. Nate Lichty coming back into the game for Crestview. Here's Davis. Drops it off the lockoff. Turn around jumper. This one's no good. Right now, Brooks lockoff is just a little bit short on those three pointers. Under two left to go. Hunter. Long pass cross court. This one's good. Kellen Putnam makes another basket. Crestview now on top six. Minute 30 left to go. Myers underneath the basket gets this one to go up and in. Pretty move by the six foot two inch junior going baseline. Little reverse pivot. So back to a four point game. Putnam dropped it down low to Sheets. Back out to Putnam. Shots on its way. This one's going to be long. Lockoff. Going to go one on one against Hunter. Does a nice job of controlling the basketball that time. Not trying to rush that shot and gets that one to go down for two. Nice Euro step finish right there. Back to a two point deficit. Sheets gets the rebound, kicks it out. Three point try, no good. And we're gonna have a loose ball foul. This one, let's see who they call it on. As it is gonna go against Connor Sheets and that is his third just here in this quarter. As Connor Sheets will have to take a seat Forty-two seconds left to go here in the quarter as Crestview started off strong, got the lead, but Wayne Trace has managed to stay close, and now they have an opportunity to see if they can't keep this game tied going into the fourth quarter. Stoller working against Sheets, turns around in the lane, no good, but Davis does a nice job with moving without the basketball. Is there for the putback for two. Great job by Kellen Putnam that time as he got his defender to leave his feet and knew that contact was coming, and he will make a trip to the free throw line. Davis is third. Yeah, Putman's given great minutes tonight too. So Tyler Davis with three fouls now. Little floor cleanup before Kellen Putman takes his free throws. Putman lines up his first shot. It's on its way. And this one is no good. Kellen lines up the second. Shots on its way. This one is good. Crestview back up one, 30 to 29. 
just under 18 seconds left to go here in the third. You know, coming in, he'd only shot one free throw attempt. Good job by that young man. Tanner Lockoff gets it up into the front court. Here's Stoller. Gets into the lane, has it swiped away by Hunter, but got it back. Lockoff sends a three-pointer. This one's no good. And that will bring the third quarter to a close. So a fast-paced third quarter as we head into the fourth. Crespi will have the one-point lead, 30-29. to We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Carey Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. I'd also like to thank tonight's premier sponsor, Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Fourth quarter just about underway here at the Palace. Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, that third quarter was a lot more of what we were expecting out of both of these teams. Absolutely, but you know, it was almost like it was a carbon copy of the first quarter. You know, just flip-flopped. But uh, yeah, both teams got to, got got things going. There's Wren on the glass, and Wren Sheets able to get that two pointer in. So Crestview able to extend that lead out to three. Yeah, Winnens goes baseline, looking for somewhere to go with it. Guarded tightly by Hunter, able to get it out to Stoller. As Lock Brooks Lockoff comes over, going to take it up around midcourt, let Wayne Trace reset. Lockoff looks like he wants to go one on one. They also, look like they're trying to see if they can't get Stoller alone down low. Three point shot by Tanner Lockoff, his first points of the night, and that is a big three pointer for them. By a freshman. Got his feet set, ripped it from that left corner. Back all tied up. 32-32, Carson Hunter with the catch and shoot. That one's no good. Winnens comes down with the rebound. Winnens working against Hunter. Goes right in it to the contact, no whistle. And, and Kale Winnens get able to get that two-point shot as Wayne Trace is back on top. Back and forth they go. Neither team really able to take control here in the second half. Harding's shot was off. Ren Sheets is down low battling for it. Goes up out of bounds. Last touch by Wayne Trace. Ren Sheets will take the inbounds. Temple waiting for Etzler to come three. Come free, excuse me. And the defense was there, but then all of a sudden they backed up and let Etzler alone. He takes the shot, but can't connect. As Tanner Lockoff brings it up for the Raiders. Lockoff pulls up for two. This one's off the glass. As Brooks Lockoff, as you can see in the gym, just scored his 1,000th career point as a Raider, a special moment for that young man. Congratulations to him, his immediate family. That's a great accomplishment and a great honor from this young man at a historic basketball school. You know, I think a lot of people take for granted what it takes to have that kind of career and how many varsity minutes you need to play and games you need to be in in order to come up with that kind of accomplishment. And Brooks Lockoff, as you can see, knows how to score, as that was his 20th point of the night. And he will forever be able to have that milestone as a 1,000-point scorer here at Wayne Trace High School. So we have stop in action as they are doing some celebrations, taking some photos, and honoring Brooks Lockoff like they should. We will step aside, and we will be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Carey Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our community. We are back underway after a brief stoppage to acknowledge Brooks Lockhoff and his accomplishment in scoring 1,000 career points. 
with that basket that did push the Raider lead out to four, which is the largest lead that they've had in quite a while. Carson Hunter with the pull up too. Good execution there by the visitors. Carson hitting that big jump shot there from the left elbow, just inside it. And now Lockoff feeling it again. He had gone a little cold as we had seen some of his shots, especially from range, uh, fall just a little bit short. It's kind of bouncing off the front of the rim, but seems like maybe that thousand point gave him a little bit of extra step. See Kale Winnens hobbling around. He looks injured as he might have rolled his ankle. Ren Sheets comes up with the rebound and the putback. And we're going to have another official timeout as Kale Winnens is going to have to come to the bench. As you can see, he tried to play through it there, didn't want to leave anybody wide open, but obviously in some discomfort. Yeah, no question right now, Mr. Ren Sheets is keeping Crestview in the game with his effort on the offensive glass and finishing those plays. Ren Sheets now with 12 points on the night. He leads Crestview in scoring. Lockoff's three-point shot, no good. Harding with the rebound. Gavin Etzler. I think Gavin Etzler might have gotten a little lucky on that one. That whistle would have been a little bit later as it looked like he was trying to get a round. It was, I believe that was Miller, Brady believe. Miller, yeah. And uh, I think he might have lowered his shoulder a little bit there, but the official had already seen the contact from Miller originally. That foul was Brady Miller's first of the night. It is the fifth team foul for Crestview. Carson Hunter is going to drive against Stoller. Brooks Lockoff comes over for the help. As Hunter has to get rid of it. Long pass over to Harding. Yep, they appear to be in a triangle and two right now against Crestview. You can see the double team coming is. Wayne Trace trying to get a couple of extra possessions. Long pass over to Harding. Harding for the pull up two and good. That's where you can hurt him in the triangle and two is down along the baseline. If you get execution and everybody's on the same page. Harding with his first basket of the night. Ties this game up at 38. Stoller working down low. Turns around against Sheets. Has this one rejected. Temple pushes it up to Etzler. Etzler, I don't know that he was quite ready for it, but he finally gathered it in. He was on the out-of-bounds line. That's one of those right there where he just ran out of real estate down there and stepped on the end line. So Winnings looks like he must be okay as he's coming right back into the game. So came over, got a rest, got looked at, maybe taped up a little bit. He's right back to action. We have a trap. This one's going to go out of bounds. It will stay with Wayne Trace. A little half-court run and jump right there, like you said, partner. Stoller gets it into Lockoff. He's going to move around to the right side, pulls it back out. Davis. Davis looks to drive. Works against Lichty. Gets it off the glass. No good. Stoller with the put back, and that one's no good. So Kyle Stoller is going to make a trip to the free throw line. We'll be back with those free throws right here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. So Kyle Stoller at the free throw line. He's able to connect on his first free throw of the night. Stoller now with seven in the game as Wayne Trace is back on top one. 74% for this young man on the season from the charity stripe. And Stoller connects on both. We will have a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well and be back right here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our community. Coming out of the timeout, 
Wayne Trace is up two as it has been back and forth this entire second half between both of these clubs. This feels, Gil, as we get a little bit deeper into this game, that it's going to come down to who has the ball last. Mm -hmm. Temple for three. That one rattles in as Mitch Temple comes up with a big three-pointer for the Knights. That's a big one for the young man coming in at 10.2 points a game. Got his fifth point there by the three ball. A little weave action up top, but this one gets poked away. They have numbers. Temple goes right at lockoff. Can't get it to go down, though. Sheets not able to gather it in. Tyler Davis comes and grabs it for Wayne Trace. I think the length there of lockoff made a huge difference right there on him missing that layup. Brooks lockoff. Little jab step. Drops it down to Hudson Myers. Myers working along that baseline. Has to give it over to Brooks lockoff again as Tyler Davis works it around the perimeter for the Raiders. 2.12 left to go here in the game. Stoller for three. That one's good. Kyle Stoller, a big three-pointer for Wayne Trace. Little pick and pop action right there. Knocked down the three from the top of the key. Under two left to go. Wayne Trace back on top two. Coming in, he had two made threes on the season. We're going to have a foul. This one is going to be on Hudson Myers. I think they got him with a hold. As you see, Tanner Lockoff check back into the game for Wayne Trace. Carson Hunter looking for somewhere to go, and he gets the five-second call. So another turnover and a costly one for Crestview. Kale Winans coming back into the game, as is Jared Harding. Brooks Lockoff with the long pass to Stoller. Stoller tracks it down, gathers it in, oh, has this one block. blocked by Sheets. Passes up the head to Hunter. Hunter, no look pass over to Temple. Temple for three. That one's no good. Sheets right there has it rejected. A lot of athleticism on the court right now. Two nice plays by both ball clubs. Mitch Temple now works it behind the three-point line. Long pass over to Hunter. Harding. It's it back over to Hunter. He's going to drive, drops it down to Sheets. Sheets off the glass for two. And the and one opportunity. Great play by Ren Sheets, knowing the contact was going to come, so he went up strong and got that one off the glass. You know, during that triangle and two, Carson Hunter did a great job dribble penetrating in the middle of that zone. Then with the little dish off, like you said, that's a great finish there by Ren Sheets, taking it up strong through his face. Ren Sheets not able to connect on the free throw. In the second half, Crestview only one made free throw. And we are all tied at 43 with a minute left to go. Tanner Lockoff working against Temple. Looking for somewhere to go, looking for the screen. Gets caught with the double, and we're going to have a timeout. Wayne Trace is going to want to talk about it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. We'd also like to thank tonight's premier sponsor, Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. 52.7 seconds left to go here at the Palace, and we are all tied up at 43. Nick Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert, as this one has turned into exactly what we thought it was going to, a well-contested game and going to go right down to the wire. Tanner Lockoff working through some traffic, gets it over to Brooks Lockoff. Long pass up ahead as Tyler Davis gathers that one in, and they're going to look to spread the floor. They're going to try to go one-on-one -on -one and let Lockoff create. Brooks guarded by Hunter, looking for somewhere to go. And he wants to be on that right side. 
Winans is going to run through as we got a little bit of a box and one here, and we're going to have another timeout for Wayne Trace. This one will be a full as well, so we'll step aside once again and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Cary Insurance and Grover Hill. Proudly investing in our youth programs and our community. And when you take a look at the Cary Insurance scoreboard, you can see we are all tied up. 43 apiece, 17 seconds left to go. Wayne Trace calls another timeout. It looked like they were trying to set something up, but Crestview did a nice job of being disciplined. And not giving them a lot of space. We'll see what they drew up here at this timeout. Stoller drops it off to Winan. Winan gets it over to Lockoff. He tried to go baseline, decides to change direction. Hunter playing nice defense. Lockoff pull up, jumper for two. That one's no good. And Crestview now with the timeout with 2.7 seconds left to go. We will step aside and we will back to see if we're going to have bonus basketball. Stay tuned on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Cary Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. All tied up at 43 with just 2.7 seconds left to go. Wayne Trace still with the foul to give, so they can be pretty aggressive here if they want to. At this point, they're just looking to knock this one down and try to get this one to overtime. Yeah, I love watching both coaches you know, take that marker and draw things on the board. You know, one's looking to get a shot opportunity, and one is playing a game plan defensively on what to allow and what not to allow. You got to like the shot, though. You know, you thousand point score. You got a one on one situation. Let's we'll see what Crestview comes up with here. They did add some time to the clock, so it is four seconds to go. It's a lot Crestview. of time. Got to go the length of the floor, though. Inbound to Temple. He's going to run two, and he gets fouled right at half court. As Stoller grabbed him, and it looks like we will have one more timeout with 2.1 seconds left to go. This looks like this will be a full timeout, so we will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Our scoreboard sponsor for tonight is Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. So 2.1 seconds left to go. Uh, Crestview will have an opportunity with two seconds left to go, a catch, maybe a dribble or two. Who do you think they're going to try to get this one into, Gil? You, you know, you want to get your best opportunity and your best look right here. That's going to be the the thing for Crestview, and you don't want to get caught with a five-second count here, so you at least want to get the basketball in play. So Wayne Trace not going to guard the inbound. Try to guard whoever comes oh, free. Red Sheets left all alone down low as there was miscommunication on the switch, and Red Sheets puts it in, and Crestview is going to come back with a huge victory tonight. Yeah, what a heck of an out-of-bounds play drew up. Mike Crestview right there. They were trying to run a cross screen, run Etzler up the top. They got what they wanted. They got the double team action. And, you know, Mr. Sheets, being the, the, the post presence that he is, slipped the screen, perfect pass, right at the buzzer. Heck of a high school basketball game. We will step aside, and when we come back, we will have tonight Stolly, Stolly Hustle Award winner. Stay tuned on WOSN. Welcome back to the Palace here at Wayne Trace High School. 
Check out the WOSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner of the Stolly Hustle Award winner. And we had some discussions during the break, and there were some pretty big performances on both sides. But when it was all said and done, the game winner from Ren Sheets and what he did all game long led us to give him tonight's award. I think just his presence at both ends of the floor with his rebounding ability, defending, block shots, and then that great action right there on the slip screen. I know the, the Wayne Trace kids are disappointed. You know, we talked earlier, they have one senior on this basketball team at times tonight. They were playing sophomores and freshmen. It's going to be a learning experience, but I'll tell you what, they're going to have this one in the back of their mind, and they're going to fix this going into the second half run of the GMC. And like Crestview, big win on the road, you know, fought some adversity early on in the game and uh, got great contributions from the bench. And I think the bench kept them into the game for the most part, and then obviously the post presence in our Stolly Award winner, Mr. Sheets, made the difference here in the second half. Ren Sheets with 16 points on the night, a tremendous effort on the offensive end. I'd like to also say congratulations one more time to Brooks Lockoff. He had a great night as well, scoring 22 points as he also cashed in his 1,000th career point tonight. So a big accomplishment uh, for him. Congratulations to Brooks. When it was all said and done, though, Crestview on a last-second layup by Ren Sheets is going to extend their win streak to seven games as they come out on top 45-43. to We'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. like to thank our crew doing a great job as always. Megan, Mia, and Kelsey working our cameras, doing a great job as always. Nick back in the studio doing all our editing. We appreciate everything you guys do as always. One final time from the Palace of Wayne Trace. Crestview knocks off the Raiders 45-43. For Darren Gilbert, I'm Nate Garlock. Have a great night, everybody.